listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Cosmos After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Cosmos After Show. There's a reason why we're playing this tonight. They say behind a great man, there's always a great pair of women. That's right. We have a lady finally on the panel. Wow. That's right. Yes. Rocking it out, no doubt, with just a girl. And we have a new panelist. So I before do. we go any further, hello, AfterBuzz TV Nation. With over 27 million weekly downloads listened to in 75 different countries, we're your one-stop, one destination for true after-show entertainment. We are Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, episode 6, deeper, deeper, deeper still. I'm JC, and I got no time for jokes. Let's introduce the rest of our panel, starting with the our new addition, <laughs> lovely lady in black. Hello, everyone. I am Autumn Chickless, and I'm so happy to be here and on the panel. Ho ho hold on. How did this, how did we get this... Um, you guys, if you're not watching live, I'm telling you, you should. She is gorgeous and yes. with the intellect to match. So oh, well, thank you. Thank you for but so see, much. Our, we listen to our listeners and, view, and viewers here. Yes. You wanted a beautiful woman panelist? You, you got it. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're surrounded by beauty. And you know what? Guys, I'm sorry you're going to hate me. We got to introduce our other lovely lady. Oh, she's running our web. She's back. back. She's back. I am back. <laughs> I was sad that I wasn't here last week, but I'm we like, you. you know what? I'm going to be here this week. Yeah. Our lady well, stats. Lady stats. <laughs> we have some more female energy here. Of course. That's awesome. Always. Great. Next week, they're going to be redecorating the studio. Our days are done. Wow. <laughs> but of course, guys, our site. And let us introduce the lovely gentleman to my Ooh, right. Oh, I'm lovely too. Yes. Right. Tell us about yourself. Hello, my name is Dylan Chance, <laughs> and I'm back again. Across the table, this, he's the muscle of the group. Yeah, the muscle. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Scott Moore. Good to be back, as always. Awesome, and great to have you. We had a great episode tonight. Honestly, what were your thoughts tonight of deeper, deeper, deeper still? Hold on. First, let's talk about your shirt. Oh boy. Uh, if you're not this watching right now, JC is wearing a marvelous shirt that features Dr. Tyson and Dr. Sagan as little Lego men. Yes. <laughs> and they're awesome. I want that shirt it's so amazing. badly. Check I'm going to rip it off of you oh, there's the end of the night. <laughs> there's a little rocket shooting past the moon. It's I mean, great. It's, it is so amazing. Later we're going to... Take a picture of that shirt, and we're yes. gonna put it up it's going so to everyone be, can see it. Yes, it was a surprise too. You were wearing a jacket. We didn't see it until yes. like yeah, he hit it. It's very very just now. <laughs> I had to because I have to keep up with you guys because your breadth of science knowledge to me, who I'm used to talking about the Kardashians and the Bachelor. <laughs> come on, I needed something, and the lovely people at Shirt Punch TV have this great sale every day. They post up shirt for 24 hours. And you have to buy it or else you lose it forever. And I happen really to just cool. trample on into their site and I see this shirt. I think it was like the middle of last month. I was like, oh my God, if I buy this shirt, people will take me seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with Lego, man. And we do. No, but I had to. So once again, thank, check out their site. They've got great stuff every day. So shirtpunchtv.com. Check it out. But enough yes, of yes, that. Yes, yes, I want it right now. You want it? Well, <laughs> well, I'm going to go look. Shirtpunchtv. Dot com. Dot com. And right, they I'm had another shirt, actually, another like Cosmo, Cosmos-esque shirt on like a week ago as well. So definitely keep an eye on it. So great stuff there. So I'm going to make my own. You're going to make your own? Yeah, watch me. Competition. Wow. All I right. like it. Okay. Let's go. All right. So what are we here for? Oh, yeah. The show. Cosmos. Hey. Hey <laughs> what were your thoughts? Uh, Autumn, let's start with you. What did you think overall? Wow. Um, overall, there were a few things that were touched upon that were really close to my heart. We are going to discuss it later, obviously, with the synesthesia. Ooh, but the tease. Um, <laughs> discussing um, memory and the way that sense affects our memory and that really actually not only because of the synesthesia but holds like a very specific place in my heart as an actor for a lot of different reasons sure but um, 
I loved the episode. I mean, it was my first time watching it with these guys, and the commentary going on was awesome. So that, was, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a blast. Woo. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. We can't have you give it all away. So, Scott, thoughts? Um, this episode, at first, I, maybe it's because my brain is very tired, but it, it felt even more kind of all over the place than some of our previous episodes. Mm-hmm. Felt like they were really touching on a lot of things and trying to throw a lot of us, a lot of stuff in in a very little amount of time here. I don't know what you guys thought about that. You know, between talking about the, the dew drop and you know the atoms in your eyes and the sense to then going on to neutrinos, neutrinos, yes, and the sun and universe, you know, age through you know looking at light. So there was you a know, lot that was kind of in there at, at, in one episode. That's a good point. Like they all kind of tied together. Or, well, obviously everything ties yeah, together, yeah. but. At the end, they kind of jump back to what we've already talked about mm-hmm. with the, the age of the universe and the, and the cosmic age. calendar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a little much to slap on the end after we already had our brains rattled through the yeah. rest of the episode. And talk about the neutrons and the electrons. Yeah. And, and, and then throwing in a few scientists in there as well. So it just felt like there was a lot. There was a lot. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of small things. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it, no, I, mean, I, don't, I don't disagree at all either. Um, it's interesting how normally there's more of a through line. And mm-hmm. like you said, the, everything was connected, but it was a little more scattered. It wasn't really contained in the way that it normally was, which was interesting and always fun to watch. But, and and yeah. it'll make it fun for our After Show fans to follow along as we try to make sense of all of this. Yeah. So. Trying to muddle through yes. it right now. Because, of course, we just watched it, so we don't have the time to let it all sink in and process. do the research and process yeah. and come back here. We're I haven't had time to watch it four more times. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so Kill definitely... And, spelling right in my notes. I can't <laughs> even read my notes. That's the problem every it's week. like words here. <laughs> and that's why we have Lady Stats. Marissa, she, she likes to chime in, lets us know often when we're wrong, mm-hmm. as we are from time to time. But... Let us know what you think, guys. If you guys are watching us live on AfterBuzzTV.com, hello. But if you're not, go to iTunes, go to YouTube, go to Stitcher, go to all those wonderful podcast apps. Let us know what you think and give us a rating. We love to hear from you, what you'd like to see, more girls, more <laughs> Carl Sagan shirts, whatever. And, yes, you were going to say something. I was going to say, we also have our own app now. <gasps> AfterBuzz TV has its own app. That's right. It's on the App Store. It's on the Android Store. Oh, that's right. I already got it on my phone. It's great. You can favorite your uh, favorite shows, okay. and then the next time you get on, they'll automatically be saved at the bottom of the list. So you can just jump right to them, watch the latest episode. It, it brings you straight to YouTube to watch them. It's great. That's fantastic. Oh, Woo! yeah. That's right. Makes it user-friendly <laughs> because we have close to 7,000 episodes on there. So. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 And they're all there for your viewing and listening pleasure. Oh. <laughs> so And you can see how this actually, how AfterBuzz has evolved as well. So. Mm-hmm. So enough, let's get into Life in the Dew Drop. All right, so we get, once again, the spaceship of the imagination shrinking down to minuscule. Am I missing anything already? I feel like I am. He starts talking about... Well, I was just going to say, the one thing we talked about with uh, there's more atoms in, in your eye than the known galaxies in the entire universe, which I thought was a great way to start the episode. Right, okay. So, de- But I wanted to get into the revisiting. We noticed today we re- revisited quite a few things that was explained in, mm-hmm. even in the first and mm-hmm. second episode. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like four to f- four out of five tardigrades agree. Oh. <laughs> which is one of our comments from iTunes. Mm. The return of the tardigrades. Yep, the return and, of the tardigrades. And how badass are those little suckers? They're amazing. Yeah. So cool. You know, uh, you know he, he mentioned it in the episode that they can live years without water mm-hmm. right. well, they can actually live up to 10 years without food or water and they can get down to where their body is almost it's like only three percent water left that's how dehydrated they get and they can still live i went on the cosmos app uh-huh. and i'm not sure so maybe we, we might disagree on this one i read somewhere that they had found it it was a tardigrade that went 120 years Without the without eating? water. Mm. Oh wow! Maybe yeah, it, it had food it, though. It, it, tated, it stayed in like some sort of suspended animation. Oh okay. It's in the app, wow. so yeah. I don't well, know if you guys check that out. speaking of apps, check out the Cosmos yeah. app, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little clunky at first, but now they've kind of gotten in the groove, and it's got a lot of cool little factoids. Let us know which one of us got it right. Yeah, I could have sworn it said 120. So okay. But still, regardless, these things it, it's amazing live through everything. Yes. You know, right. Nothing kills them off. They can live in extreme heat. They can live in extreme cold without water for years, without food. They can food. live in the vacuum of space. Right. Yes, they did. They survived the past all five mass exodus, uh, exodus, uh, extinctions mm-hmm. that sure. we know about, which is actually remarkable. The fact that we pretty much are struggling to survive over the past 
<laughs> we're struggling to survive the show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and of course, naturally, this is all happening within inside of a dewdrop. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So he wants to break down. Let us know what's going on there, mm -hmm. as opposed to now. Do we? Is, do we get into the moss? I, I, I'm so confused today, guys. I need your help. Guys mm -hmm. watching, I'm sh let us know. We, we get into the heart of a strand of moss? Is that what it was? It broke down to the level where photosynthesis was. Are you talking about yeah. chlorophyll? Yeah. Right, yeah, right, right but, he, but he started from, he started with the, the piece of moss into the stomata and yeah. then yeah. Right. into, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you were good. You're good. Yeah, I'm good? <laughs> yeah. It's a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> shirt has magical science powers. I'd need it. I needed that Frankie bio. Where was that? What's it's that? Like, oh, I needed that Frankie bio. It's like Joseph the Amazing Color, uh, Technicolor Dream Coat. You just put it on and it just, you know. Okay, since you guys are well versed, so what did we get out of this? This is what I want to know. What did we get out of the whole process of photosensitive? I can't even say it right now. <laughs> well, I think it was a combination of things, but I think it was, one, meant to blow our minds. Two, um, it was talking about how if we could, I think it was showing how just how great photosynthesis is and how well it um, does everything perfectly without producing any carbon, you know, uh, chemicals or whatever. What did I write down? Sorry. Um, it's carbon neutral. Yeah, it's carbon uh, neutral. Yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. pollute anything. Doesn't pollute. If we could harness it, it would make every other energy source just useless because this would Absolutely. be the best they, way to do they it. They make their yeah. own energy. It also kind of put in, again, another political thing there because, again, oh, we're climate about change. climate change yeah. and right. basically right. saying if we were to be able to implement artificial photosynthesis that we'd be able to help tame the climate change we've been having because we'd be able yeah, to... Yeah, there's definitely a point of relation there, there when you're discussing... Yes. The fact that nature without us, I think he actually threw in a little tidbit about the fact that it was more specific, but the general consensus was nature would thrive if we weren't here, mm -hmm. but we would not thrive without nature. So yes, right. It's a little Very well said. Nature plug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Human um, dissing. so why haven't we, we, why haven't, I can't talk today. Marissa, you're going to have to buzz me out of here. Okay, <laughs> why haven't we been able to figure out the art of photosynthesis. I got it right. <laughs> See, hmm. that's the question. With I, all our modern technology, you know, sure, they've been doing it for billions of years, but why, since this is the, our age of technology, <laughs> why have not we learned how to use that? Well, be able to harness, harness that it. and be able... I, I, again, I think it's, it, it's, again, showing how detailed, you know, the universe really is, mm -hmm. where it comes to just so many other things that we can't quite figure out yet and photosynthesis is just something that's so complex in its own way that that for us to be able to replicate it in human form and in, in, in a machine type way is just we're not there yet yeah and on such a mass and scale such a mass, exactly to where it would make, yeah the mass mm -hmm. scale that you'd have to have to be able to use that and harness it in a way that would be able to work okay you know I, i'm i'm breezing through this because i just really want to get to topic number two Oh yes, yeah. I, it's it's your first night here, rookie. But oh, no. okay. I was like, "Topic number two for me is this." All right, Spanish Inquisition. Let's go. Okay. Well, yes. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. finish it, please, please. I was gonna say, uh, team here. Well, I was gonna say, let's introduce it with the uh, smell. Of course. Yeah. Take it away. Oh, well, hey, hey, yeah, yeah. No, let's take your take your job. No, absolutely <laughs> no, no, no. Because we ended up talking about it was basically we have Dr. Tyson in just smelling, is it lilacs and orchids mm -hmm. and explaining the beauty. The, on tonight, tonight's episode, what I learned was the beauty of biology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like, there was like a romantic, to me, I found, I found it like almost romantic, just the way that how science just shows us colors and scents. Just. Well, that's what I love about this show, frankly, is that there is a touch of romance and there's a touch of creativity to it that allows people who are a little, uh, not necessarily less cerebral, but more, I suppose for lack of a better word, word romantic, it's much more inviting in that way. So that's one of the reasons I personally love the show in mm. general, and this was kind of a perfect example of that. So it helps, you're saying it helps peop, uh, bring people in? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. You guys like the little boy too. and the girl with the flower. Oh, that was cute. <laughs> that was, was an awe moment. Which was kind of interesting too, because I, I that was one part I didn't really get about. Well, I mean, I got it because I understand the whole thing with the atoms and nucleus, and you're not really touching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But oh, I also didn't get field. that because, yeah, the force field. I'm like, well, at I don't some 
some point you are touching. There are is things happening. I so. don't think Dad would have been cool with that <laughs> excuse. I know that's what I'm like. That was <laughs> it was kind of a silly thing because I get what he was going for, but at some point. Well, yeah, I mean, and it says with everything. So everything you touch, yeah. the force fields of right. telling each other. Did you guys uh, ever see? But you actually what? are at some point, you know, and you're inflicting damage, and you are yeah. moving atoms when you're moving things around. So, but that's the force of the it's impact of the, the force, force field, field. Right. Yeah. right? So, so we ne necessarily do not know what it feel truly feels like to touch. We only know what the force field tells us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really. Um, have you guys seen uh, Matrix? What the bleep do we know? Yes, what, what the bleep, bleep do we know? They talk about that a lot in that. Uh, oh, okay. Because they talked about dribbling a basketball and how you're not touching the basketball and the basketball's not touching the ground, but yet it's going back and yeah, forth. Yeah. I like I'm gonna that. that'll freak that you out when you think about it, though. Yeah. It's just like this thing, yeah, yeah, just going up and down. <laughs> it's sort of like that whole thing when he was talking about with the law, you know, the. Um, what was the law called? The law Con of conservation. conservation. Yeah, I totally forgot what it was called. It was sort of that same, that same Concept, theory, yeah. except okay. this was with gravity, obviously, but um, what you were just saying with the basketball. Okay, but so back to, back to the. Sense. I am just jumping at the bit to find out about this because basically this is going to be crazy. He ends up talking about oh, how does the smell <laughs> prompt the memory of, let's say, a movie, and then mm -hmm. you chimed in with a little something. Being a synesthete, yes, uh, I don't want to disappoint you. It's not. I don't think it's that exciting, but yes, I do have synesthesia, and I have kind of an interesting form of synesthesia, which is um, lexical gustatory synesthesia where essentially the senses mix, the whole point of synesthesia, or not point, the discoveries regarding synesthesia means that the senses mix. So what most people have is they'll see a word or they'll see a number and they'll associate it with a color. Most people, you might have heard about that. The thing that happens with me, and it's kind of, apparently they think it's genetic, when I listen to things and when I hear words and when I hear certain music, I taste and smell it. So... Okay. Yeah. How does that work exactly? Okay. What do you taste? Do you in taste like if mm -hmm. I say bacon? Yes. I knew I was gonna say. Bacon. But I mean, well, okay. And, delicious. <laughs> and this is what happens every time: is people discover this and then they start saying things like bacon. Well, I won't say anything gross. Well, no anything thank gross. you. You're the first person who has it. Because <laughs> that's, that's You're me. the first person who has it. Immediately, people just start uh, saying the uh, gnarliest uh, things that they can, just so I'll taste it. No, I'll that's just that's wrong. messed up. <laughs> but do you have specific tastes, like uh, just in general, some uh, a different taste for a certain word that has nothing to do with that taste? Yeah, absolutely. Or, you know, um, so like color. cup. Cup. Uh, that is kind of plasticky for me. It's different, Weird. but it's an involuntary <laughs> response. I know it's very strange. It's an involuntary response, and it's the same every time. So they don't change. Okay. Oh, with right. And sometimes it's very related, like with bacon, it's bacon, uh, yeah, yeah, with yeah, different yeah. words, it's mm -hmm. definitely related. But then there are others that are completely inexplicable. Maybe they are, but just to my knowledge, I don't know where the association comes from. I'm mm -hmm. not sure exactly how it got there. Yeah. If there's even a reason, there are certain uh, melodies and music that will bring me back to a certain taste or smell. Mm. Or um, actually on a few occasions, it's only happened like twice, maybe three times in my life, I have had a very hard time getting to know a certain person because they put a bad taste in my mouth, literally. Oh, literally. Yeah, wow. because of the way, like, the way that their voice sounds, it just triggers something. Right. And they could be the nicest human being in the world. And <laughs> some, oh, you taste bad, and you can't say that. <laughs> Is that what you're basically no. saying about me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man, I was going to make that joke. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously. Yeah. But I'm just kidding. Do you, is it overwhelming? Are no, these no, tastes no. overwhelming or is it very, is it depend or? It's, it's pretty, I mean, maybe it's because it's just been that way my whole life. I actually only discovered that this wasn't a normal thing mm -hmm. a few years ago because I remember when I was very, very young, I was in the car with my dad and I remember I was listening, I think it was to Rent or some Broadway show, nerd plug. Mm -hmm. And uh, I turned to my dad and I said, hey, you know, is it normal that, you know, I taste things when I hear? And he's like, oh yeah, of course that's normal. Apparently it's genetic. Oh, <laughs> yes. oh wow. He's like, yeah, of course. And you know, he's sig not significantly, sorry dad, he's older than I am. So he went his whole life without realizing that this mm -hmm. actually isn't a thing. And I was in a psychology class and they brought up this really weird thing that some people have called synesthesia. And everyone was asking questions about it, and I realized over the course of the class, I have this. Oh, this that's crazy. Wow. Not everyone tastes sounds. Uh, that's very weird. Do you taste your own words? Um, you when know you what? When you speak, do you taste come into your mouth? Yes, actually. Um, yeah, that's... I never really right? I never really thought about it, but yes, maybe it's just because <laughs> but if I say certain words than the response okay. and it's not every word i mean if you say and mm -hmm. it's not like 
there's a specific... That has the worst yeah. taste. And no, Mar- that would, that would be terrible <laughs> if that were the case. Marissa's probably thinking, these guys are so off topic, but you know what? Actually, this is goes in it does. sync no, with tonight's I, show. I find it really <laughs> fascinating because I don't know about you guys, but I <laughs> did you ever watch the uh, show Heroes? Yes. Yeah. On NBC, and the, there, were, there was the character the Emma uh, mm-hmm. who was deaf, but she could see colors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that that's just that that's an anesthesia. That's, an that, that, that's just like what it blows my mind. My it's best phenomenal. friend has that kind where he has perfect pitch. He doesn't actually have perfect pitch, but he sees colors when he hears different notes. But that's so awesome. I mean, on it the note might get play. overwhelming, but where in theory, that's him? cool. <laughs> where did like I meet him? Yeah, do you yeah, like yeah. yeah. Well, he's my best friend since we were like 12. And so you just best friend just happened that all had yes, superhero yeah. powers. <laughs> wow. Okay, so tonight okay, we have really one half of the Wonder Twins. Wow. <laughs> 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 no, so basically it's explaining, so... Maybe it's in the water there. Maybe Yeah, what if uh, there's like a magical place? <laughs> I'm going there. Well, no, but keeping to the show, it's almost... it's So it's a genetic mutation yes. of this, you know, basically flight or flight or survival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So because basically what it, they talked about is it goes from the olfactory nerve to the amygdala to the hippocampus, mm-hmm. which thus creates... You know, us, our awareness, where if bears are coming, if we, we can smell things coming fire. our way. Mm-hmm. Or fire. Fire you know, and things away, like that. So. Triggers memories and all of those things. All of those electrical signals are all right next to it. They're all neighbors. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when one's getting triggered, the other one's kind of chiming in on it, too. Mm-hmm. So right. it makes sense. Yeah, it makes we've sense. all had those experiences. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you're walking down the street and, you know, you smell bread and suddenly you're thinking about, I don't know, grandma's house or whatever right. you smell right. bread with. So it's pretty much like that, only in reverse for me. Wow. But almost in a, almost a more detailed way that other people wouldn't have. Like you're saying, like with the extra layer of there of, of sound kind of triggering a scent. Mm-hmm. So you have which a whole other layer. Which triggers a memory. Which triggers a memory and everything. I'm too. a very so pensive a whole... person. I'm constantly <laughs> thinking about the past. I That's gotta... probably where you do acting, right? You, gotta, you have all the creative, <laughs> yeah, you know? You gotta get into all it's that. It's helpful. It right. certainly is when they're saying like, oh, you're on a beach now. Well, smelling nice. salt. So I got a question for you and for everyone mm-hmm. watching at home. When Dr. Tyson asked us to all take a breath, how many of us took a breath? Raise your hand. Oh, of course. I, did. I actually did not. <laughs> Dylan! I did very silently. I did too. I was a bit embarrassed. I was it. too. I was, I was like already like in mid breath when he said it, and I was like, eh, I'm already breathing. <laughs> like, I, Dylan's such a rebel. I don't need the reminder. Such a rebel. No, because you wrote down, didn't you write? I saw you wrote right in your notes on when he asked that stat of when we, we take in that breath, we take in, it's at 100 million molecules. Oh, I did, yes. Which is basically more than, I, I, what was the stat? Basically more than every single person that has existed no, in the No, no, it's, no, it's no, been shared th- with everyone. Oh, that freaked me out of people in the yeah, past. I was like, you're basically yeah. breathing in air that people breathed in. Yeah, I, I heard about this before. Years ago. That's like, so cool, like, though. The air Think of the cool. implications of that. But it's also kind of freaky in a yeah. weird way, too. <laughs> like the air we're breathing now is shared with, like, yeah. Julius Caesar. Oh, I, I got his breath. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <sighs> so... And, and just this episode, as it's going, we're kind of like our after show tonight. But no, no, no. <laughs> um, anything else that we got out of the power of scent? The, any, 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 would you like, dislike? Any, any feelings, guys? Mm. Because uh, we, we were so enamored to talk about your story. But <laughs> what about the show itself? Well, I mean, I think it was, it was, it, it was a good way of, of looking at it because I think it is a thing that we've all wondered about. You know, mm. why do you know, particular sense, elicit memories, and so it was good to kind of see how that all came about and what what the reason is behind that. I'm just overall every week more and more astonished by the mechanism of science. And the mm-hmm. more we know, mm-hmm. the means the less we know. And how there's a universe in everything. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. Every Everything, s- like even an atom, mm-hmm. the, the world of atoms is its own universe mm-hmm. because it's so intricate and unique. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but I'm trying to th- think when we got into, when we, we were further breaking down, I know I want, we want to talk about the people they talked about this week, like Thales. Thales. And, yes. Thales. And, and is it Democrates? Yeah. Democritus? Yeah, Democritus. Yes. Yes. Democritus I that's, think. that's my new uh, role model. Yeah, that's basically how I already awesome. asked as it is. He was so cool. I would have been friends with him. Me too. I'm like, life is a celebration. I'm all about his philosophy. I like, like that. Let's look you know? at this one. That's what you want to be. About the yeah. A guy that yeah. believes, you know, in science and, you know, is just wants to study, but at the same time just wants to have fun, drink some wine. And for Marissa, you right. did not watch the episode. Basically, Democrates, he talks about, he's a, a, a brilliant man who was talking about uh, the, of atoms and the space of, atoms need a lot of free space to move around. Mm-hmm. Okay, within that, he said also, life without parties is like an endless road with no end. 
So he was just a, a bit redundant. He was. Yeah. 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 The way he said it, it was, he was like really I was like, philosophical, yeah, we, yeah. but it's a little redundant. It is. He was I thought the same thing. I actually questioned I I myself did. writing it down. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? I, I wrote it. I, I didn't like, write endless. I just said road without end. Yeah, because yeah. It was uh, road. <laughs> From the Department of Redundancy <laughs> Department, <laughs> Democracy. He was a bit drunk. He was That's drinking right. a lot of wine. That's no, fine. but you got to admit, he's a right philosophical there. man. Yeah, and and we jumped ahead. I'm sorry. Thales. Let me, let's talk about Thales. And, Thales. And Thales mm. was he he brought up the fact. Now was he the one that talked about that there was that nature wasn't a punishment from yes, the gods? Yes, natural processes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so he was the first one with, to bring up. I like this guy, Thales. What yes. about him? He, I just he, he stepped outside. He's a rebel. You know, everyone's <laughs> like, like eh, God's mad. It's raining. It's thundering. Oh, the gods are angry with us. Thales like, nah, it's just raining. Well, <laughs> I like did, that guy. How did he come to that conclusion? That's what I want. I can't imagine sense. that. I, yeah, seriously, I can't imagine <laughs> that he. I can't imagine that he was the first to think it. He's obviously the first documented to say mm, something about sure. it. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that this kind of thinking was going on long before that. Mm -hmm. He was just the first, either the first to come out and have the balls. Well, to he say was it. the first person that didn't get killed when they said yes. it. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Giordano Bruno. Um, and, oh, I still think the opposite happens today in a lot of places. You know, there's still people who are like, oh, you know, if it's raining or there's a major hurricane or something happens somewhere, it's. The wrath of God, or well, somebody's. Well, yeah, something. people think that a lot of people. Right, think so that like it still happens today. You know that that, that this is an issue. So my aunt Clara's like that. So when will we ever happens. learn? Okay, we've hit a death spot. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> let's move on. We've talked about Democrates mm -hmm. and Thales. So this is the part, as if, as as I was not confused enough, when we delve deeper into the love part of this. To that. To elements. Yes. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Help me with the elements, guys. We're talking about carbon, and we mm -hmm. were going yes. about hydrogen, how, helium, helium, correct, mm -hmm. etc. How do we how do we break this down? So we we broke it down where he's at at a cathedral. Yes. And he's explaining that is actually an atom, mm -hmm. and the, this whole atom is basically to find the nucleus. You would have to look at a speck of dust. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the size of this huge yeah. cathedral. That's amazing. So we're going, okay, the reason I'm asking is because we're going from, let's say, the Oort cloud, we're going from a giant sun, we're going from Jupiter to Earth to a small moon to the iris, to our eye, mm -hmm. down to an atom, down to the nucleus of an atom, then down to the subatomical level. I mean, how much smaller does it get? Well, actually, I think right after the nucleus, I think what nucleus is, uh, they're made of quarks, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Quarks. Mm -hmm. And then quarks, well, now we're going into string theory, string theory. Yeah. but quarks are made of strings. Right. So like four random strings that were created when the universe started. And, oh, here's a fun thing, that they think that other universes, depending on the way they started, there are other strings that govern the molecules and atoms in those universes. So their universes could have all these different laws of physics yeah, that we yeah. can't even understand. We don't even understand. We don't because, I know. Fathom. Yep. Because they're all at the uh, basis of everything. Mm -hmm. It's just fundamentally different. I really hope yeah. Cosmos does well in the box office yeah. so we can get Cosmos 2. Oh, <laughs> God, I would love so that. The other universes. I'm six no. seasons in a movie. Just, like, just yeah, explore six other universes. Six seasons in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... From the elements, we, we, we break it down to, okay, now explain to me where, when they get unstable. When there's too many neutrons. Oh, once you reach. Oh, Marissa, oh, this okay. is protons? so hard today. <laughs> You're talking about protons and, protons ne and the neutrons. neutrons to balance it out. Yeah. And right. Once you reach a certain number, then it becomes unstable, and then you, we were brought to the sun. Mm -hmm. Which exactly. is, yes. Uh, like they talked about the segue there, going yeah. to the sun. Oh, I was going to say, they talked about gold. There were so many in gold. Yeah. They were shaking around. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it makes it glittery. Oh. All that glimmers light. is gold. Yeah. 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 Well, they have 79 there. So, and you kind of listed each each one as well. You know, Car carbon is six. Carbon is six. My favorite number, by the way. Is and it? is also the building block to all life. Yes. yes. The, con the, great con the great connector. Yes. It connects us to everything. The building so. block, the connector. <laughs> And um, the only one that can do that. So now <laughs> let, let's get to the sun. Now the sun has, it's always in a gaseous state though. So it, the it, atoms yeah. are. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, the atoms, sorry. It's so hot. So what goes on in there that makes it so different? As oh, opposed to what we were talking about It before. was the, uh, the gravity. Mm -hmm. The gravity of the sun is so stupendous, is the word yeah. he used, <laughs> that it, um, 
is constantly clashing like all the atoms them in, like together, he said. which is what keeps it in one solid. Yes, okay, solid, solid for, a solid core, core. Yeah, which right. creates uh, the heat. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's where they're the, moving around, the atoms they all move around. The faster so fast. they move around, the warmer it is. I mean, that's just like here. That's Friction. a simple, mm -hmm. yeah, simple weather thing. And because too. it's so hot, and because they're moving around so quickly, the um, they actually fuse, and so the nuclei do touch, mm -hmm. which okay. is in the center. Yes. Sun, yes, in, in the, the center. <laughs> so and that makes yes. the sun a nuclear fusion reactor. Yep. Mm. A giant, a giant nuclear huge. fusion reactor with 99.8% of the mass of our solar system is the sun, by the way. That is true. Uh, <laughs> great, nice fact right there. So, <laughs> now, wasn't this where you took... <laughs> 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 As you can tell, this is a one for the record books. Yes. <laughs> and, and to make things even more confusing, how do how do what is it? Neutrinos. How, yes. How do neutrinos factor in all of this? Because basically, That's remarkable, actually. yes. Because now we move mm -hmm. on to Dr. Tyson. Like Scott, what was this room? It looked like the Matrix. It looked like like oh, at that, the end oh, of the that Matrix. Oh, awesome looking room. It yes, was. Is in Japan yeah. where they they're down. I believe it's like was it half a mile mm -hmm. down in like rock? A really yeah, intense, half a mile down like in, one of those in Japanese Earth. spas. <laughs> that's what I thought too. That's what it felt like. <laughs> you know, we float on the water and they just have the welcome to the lighting. neutrino spa. <laughs> that's what it was. You know, you just float in the salt water and you're just gonna soak there and you like the mood lighting. I mean, mood I, lighting. Like mood I lighting. Like, yeah, <laughs> a little neutrino flash here and there. Um, oh, it was fascinating, how although romantic. I know, right? I mean, it was it was pretty fascinating. But the thing, I, I mean, I've heard of this place. I'd love to go there, but there's a Groupon for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure there is, <laughs> or, or an Amazon local deal or somewhere. But <laughs> but the thing that was interesting to me is though is that when he was doing the the whole light thing, I thought it was a little, I don't want to say silly because I feel like that's taking it a little bit too far, but. I didn't. I wasn't going for it. I guess I should say. It just it didn't feel real to me. What when the, the light was flashing? flashing? Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I thought it was because I don't even think you can actually see them because they're so fast. Right. Neutrinos. Well, but, but so they, they, I know it was trying an example of how they would look. I thought it said that there was a flash given off. Whenever I think they there did is a for, certain something. Yeah. From 1987 A, right? Yeah. 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 Supernova. Right. You brought you brought something up there that you said it seemed a little cheesy in. You know, we talk about all aspects of the show, and on many blogs and what you see, many reviews of the show, sometimes they do mention that the fact that there are points in the show where it can be a little cheesy. But in defense of the show, don't they bring in these factors, these elements, so that they can bring the children of future astro that will become future astrophysicists? Yeah. To bring in the yeah. family together. Is it wrong or right? Like you said, that even bothered you, Scott? Yeah, it bothered. I mean, I, I don't want to take it too far, but I did. The, what it made, what it made me, what. It, neutrinos remind me of, I guess just to say, is like, you know when you're uh, in the ocean, you see the uh, the phosphorus light, sometimes you can see them when you're walking yeah. on the beach, and you yeah. see like the little light, mm -hmm. that's what neutrinos remind me of, and I guess that's what I was kind of envisioning in the sense for what this place would be like if you could see a flash of light, it would be something like the phosphorus in, in the ocean, which I still think is, is really incredibly beautiful if you can catch that when you're walking along the beach at night, and you can see little pops of light. That's what I think of as a neutrino, basically, in that kind of sense. I, um... I agree that there are a lot of cheesy parts, and some some things are even a little corny. Well, but just a little over the top. Or I guess over is the what top. I but say. I think it's good because, like you said, it, it caters to children who might need that kind of thing and explains or, things. Or also to people <laughs> who maybe aren't like fully engulfed in this scientific world, mm -hmm. and they need something a little cheesy or corny so that they can kind of get it and laugh at it or relate yeah. to it. And that's good. Yeah, and ultimately, if you have a six-year-old who really can't comprehend anything that's going on, but they're watching with their parents and their eyes become huge mm -hmm. because they see this thing going on and it inspires them to do um, whatever or it is ask, that they go on to do. Or ask what that is. Or yeah, what ask what it too. is. And yeah. I mean, obviously then maybe they can comprehend it. I oh, certainly I wasn't. still can't even <laughs> comprehend neutrinos. I still have I do it. not I understand that. But the mind and I of learned a child it and I still can't. is great. Do you it notice? Is. Do you yeah, notice this, uh, Dylan? Like, stop laughing. At Thirty-two me. minutes into <laughs> this, I just keep thinking Star Wars is truly wonderful. The mind of a child. Yeah, see, Yoda even said that. Yeah, Yoda said it. Yoda and said if it. Yoda said it. Then it must be true. Okay, so it must be. basically, you know, we're talking about now is a neutrino faster than the speed of light? No, no, no it's no, not. It's not. Okay. okay, it had it had a head start in that particular case. Okay, and he did say it left at almost the speed yes. of light, so it wasn't even. On its own, not as fast. Nothing, as light, so. nothing is nothing faster, can faster to our to, right. knowledge. Universal speed limit. Yeah, the cosmic, yeah. the cosmic yeah. speed limit. That's right. That Throw, yeah. Throwback we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> throw back to episode <laughs> three. <Thursday>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, you find out it ex so the su it goes supernova. It ex the star explodes. 
Neutrinos are out. Well, the neutrinos kind of remind me also, in a way, sort of like uh, animals when they leave before a storm or uh, earthquake. Yeah. Maybe you That's should a... be doing all the animation for this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that was sort of another thing that they made me think of as well. Sort okay. of like they were leaving before the event happened, like they were getting out of the way before, oh, cool. you know. Yeah, like, didn't you say that? See? Rats flee. Right, so it made me think of like a th sinking ship before a storm or an earthquake. Like, the animals knew about it. It's sort of like a neutrino. They're like, we're out. Huh. My favorite fact about neutrinos was that. Well, obviously, they can pass through mass and everything. Yeah. 100,000 light years of steel they can pass that through. That was so yeah. cool. What? Yeah. What is that and, nonsense? And not even slow down. That's our whole galaxy. Slow down. Our yes. galaxy is 100,000 uh, light years across. That means if our entire galaxy was nothing but steel. Encased in steel. Go right through it. No problem. Yeah. Get out of my way. Fascinating. What if you were able to harness that kind of energy? What on oh earth? Would I would go you through a hundred thousand light years of steel. <laughs> man, <laughs> man of steel, actually. Actually, yes. actually, nice. It, yeah. Well, before I then, if we're making such a big deal, I'd like to say thank you, Neutrinos, for being our special guest tonight. Oh, yes. <laughs> Since they are here with us. <laughs> So it sounds like, a, like a, it sounds like an energy drink or something, you know. The neutrino. Roger, you buy neutrinos. Yes. <laughs> oh, like a spa drink. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more like <laughs> neutrino. Well, yeah, neutrino. <laughs> no, it's like an energy drink. I it mean, is. if you can go through a hundred, it was a hundred light years of steel, then yeah, that's got to be some serious like. That's what the Kool Aid Man is made out of. Neutrinos. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, we've gone off the rails sorry, here. Sorry, sorry, no, great. no, no. But we we forgot to talk about Darwin. And there's a reason I have to bring oh. him up for, oh, yeah. for a second to connect him to... The foot long nose. Yes, yeah. and, and to Wolfgang Pauli. Yes. yes. To oh, Wolfgang Pauli. Yeah. See, that's that's what I, the show always gets us. They'll mention something in minute 12 that you bring back to yeah. the very end, and they did it again today. Because even though today's episode, to me, felt like, uh, like Scott said early on, a lot of back and forth, back and yeah. forth, back mm -hmm. and forth. We're here at, at the infinitesimal level to the infinite level yeah you know mm -hmm. but today it, it, it talked about darwin how darwin just knew there had to be a was it a moth or specific and you know just he said some insect, some, insect. some yeah. kind of insect that would have this long tongue or nose or what have mm -hmm. you to be able to reach the pollen just because evolution would dictate that mm -hmm. to reach the stem of an orchid so now to draw that same correlation we bring up wolfgang Pauli, who is was he a theoretical physicist as well I believe he was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. He was a physicist. Yeah. I'm gonna go with yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Can what was his theory on neutrinos? He knowing that they were there. What was that? That's where well, he came up with the law. Oh, the law of the oh, conservation of energy was 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 his his thing. Correct. So, sorry, yeah. Autumn, you were gonna chime in. He covered it pretty much. It was essentially <laughs> that um, you can, uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he, he, they did the math, and they're really cool, kind of. Uh, animated way, and they sure. showed that um, when you added up everything that was going on with the neutrons and the uh, protons, when an atom left, obviously there was one missing, but that goes against the law of conservation of energy, and there was that whole bit about in order for something to become a law in science, it has to undergo an absurd amount of research and testing before it can actually be fact, quote unquote. Correct. So this was so baffling because we have the law of conservation of energy, how is it possible that something could defy it, and so his theory was, obviously it didn't, because it's a law, it's just there's something else. There's this particle that we may n never actually understand or see, but it exists, etc. and then we found it, like, a decade later. He, so. he did say, um, well, you said it, but he said that they were so small that we may never find them. And lo and behold, hey. there's a spot somewhere in <laughs> Japan, a spa in Japan that where you and neutrinos. your lover can go visit. <laughs> And take um, a neutrino bath. They said <laughs> um, an electron has a million times the mass of a neutrino. Yes. What? An electron? I know. I, know. I was like, the little electron. How do you conceptualize? Uh, How do you... If you said it in the you episode, it, you can't. Really. We can't. We, can't. It doesn't make sense. It Whatever. Doesn't. Go with it. Maybe <laughs> maybe the six-year-old whose eyes went like this will right. be able yeah. to, but we cannot at this no. moment. Not no. with what we know and what we don't know. Oh, we have like. nothing to compare it to, so yeah. it's also like, how, how could we even because we have nothing to compare that mm -hmm. to. We don't know. And so is that where they came up with that final little story at the end with the creation of Ramsey's tomb where they ended oh, up Oh, that was cool. Oh, that was that, that was. was really cool. I didn't even know about that. Only 2 days. Ancient a Egyptians year. are badass. I mean, they are. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so absolutely cool. incredible. The thought of what they did and it only lights up for 2 days a year because of the angle of the sun and it still didn't hit the uh, what was the guy's name? The one god in the that one god. that was Ta, the lord of yes. creation. Because yes. the solar system was never meant yeah, to be tall. fully 
uh, understood, yeah. right? Kind of like, like this episode. But no, but actually, yeah. no, we totally understood. Now, well, talking yeah. it out, I'm like, oh, okay. Aliens did it. Um, Aliens. <laughs> or the, uh, yeah, the, uh, what were they called? The Tardigrades. The Tardigrades, they're all, they're they all did it. responsible for it because that's what he, he made that the, comment yeah, going back earlier. Theory. It's like if anything came in and saw the planet, they think this is the plan of the Tardigrades. Yeah, they well, they wrong. said there was they a, be wrong, they would right? not be wrong. One billion Tardigrades for every human. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's Again, ridiculous. That and they've been around a lot longer mm-hmm. than we have. Oh, okay. there was another fact that we left out. What's at that? At the very beginning, where he talked about how many atoms that he was made of. Oh, three billion, three billion, 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 yeah. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> yeah. All right, so overall thoughts and closing uh, the episode before woo. we move on to news and cosmic gossip. Uh, <laughs> final thoughts. Basically, the way we're going is after we're all gone, the tardigrades are going to have an after show about what the, what really went on here right, on this exactly. planet Earth. <laughs> That's all and I And they're going to be breathing in our what breath the from, you know. Knows. Yes. Forever. <laughs> Stay tuned for tardigrade, the after show after yeah. this one. So, <laughs> we'll be hosting. Let's go to some newsy gossip stuff. After Buzz. News in two minutes or less with Ooh, Scott yeah. Moore. Yeah, well, uh, I still bring the newspaper clippings here because I'm so old school. What is newspaper that? clippings <laughs> <I know>. Scott <laughs> But uh, this was interesting because we talked about last week about the blood moon, which is happening tomorrow, right? The 14th? Uh, tomorrow uh, and the tomorrow Tuesday. Tomorrow night, Tuesday morning. Yeah, and the Tuesday morning, the 15th. Well, so um, adding this extra layer here, these, this lunar eclipse could cause LADI, the spacecraft's instruments, to dip below operational levels. So this is going to be really cool because we're going to see the moon turn red. It's a rare lunar eclipse when the Earth steps between the moon and the sun, blocking most of the light that makes it shine, right? But for NASA's Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, or LADI for short, the eclipse might be a curse. It's a vending machine-sized spacecraft that's orbiting the moon, collecting information about its atmosphere right now, right? And But without the sun's warm rays, Laddie's instruments will chill down and could dip below their operating capacities. So, oh no, yeah, it's gonna a die. Chance that it could. Uh-oh. And actually, Laddie is is forecast to actually go into the moon and and basically crash in the moon uh, later on this month on April twenty first, regardless. Oh. But they're gonna lose the last week or so of data potentially oh. from this eclipse. So, That's not so and bad. And as it comes into well, and as it comes into the moon too. So we'll see. It may not happen. But there's a chance it will. Look, wow. there's a nice picture behind us now. I know, I know. Thank you, Mercer, yeah, for putting that the, up. The, with the, the blood. Oh, I'm yes, really excited. Moon. And in time for Passover, it'll you know, be yes, right. You know what's right. Oh, perfect time for that's Passover. That's creepy. Um, <laughs> Passing well, over. Yeah, with episode. the blood and there's, stuff. There's a joke in there. Yeah, yes. somewhere. Um, what were you going to talk about? I saw Neil deGrasse Tyson tweet earlier today because uh, a lot of newspapers and stuff are saying it's rare. Um, he's like, uh, lunar eclipse happens every few years. So if you think it's rare, ask yourself, do you think the Olympics are rare? Right. <laughs> yeah, no, this is actually, well, I mean, the next one will actually happen in October. So eclipses are a lot more common than right, right. the Olympics or a presidential yeah. election. Yeah. Speaking of tweets, I don't know if you caught this one today by him, that on this date, in the year 2029, we are, it. yes, the, the ad, I forget the name of the asteroid. Yeah, the asteroid, yeah. Should be at its closest mm-hmm. to the Earth's atmosphere. Yes. So, yeah, so mark your calendars, 2029. It's it, will, a, it will be closer than our own, uh, what is it, our own satellites. Yeah, yes. it's a stadium-sized That's yeah, That's terrifying. It is very, very scary. scary. Yes, I'm, thank you for... Don't I don't feel good about that. I know, they said it's supposed to pass by, <laughs> but, you know, it's so close. Um, I saw, wow. to add on to Scott's Blood Moon, if you're going to watch it, mm-hmm. um, Dr. Tyson actually tweeted today the best time would be at 1.53 a.m. Or 9.40, or around 9.45 p.m. here. You can start watching yes, it. Yes, 9.45 okay. p.m. Pacific, yeah, 1.43. Or 12.45 a.m. 1.53. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The start is when you can start That's watching it. That's when the start. Yes. Oh, well, he said the 1.53 was the best yes. time to see it. So. Okay. Let, it, let us know what you think, actually. That's a great yes. question for our after buzzers. Please let us know what you saw and what you thought and any other questions. And, Marissa, do we have time to have, like, two minutes to talk? to Autumn since it's her first episode. Can Go we... for it. All right. Yay, all right. Q&A. Uh, we get to know all our hosts. Yes. Like, you know, Scott, of course. I mean, Scott, I'm putting... Yeah, Scott, Scott, what is it that you do outside of this? One of my fun one of my fun mini hobbies, uh, I get to geek out to the weather as chairman of the LA chapter of the American Meteorological Society. Wow, that's so wow. cool. So Every time I'm like, geek wow. Out. <laughs> and okay, Dylan, hello. We can't leave you out yes, of this. So. Hi, Facebook. I don't do much. I have a Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash a cosmic perspective where I share all sorts of space-related news. Share all kinds of cosmic perspective. Cosmic perspective. (laughs) And with that said, so Autumn, what brought you to Cosmos? Why are you such a fan of the show? Well, I've always been a huge um, astronomy and astrology fan since I was a little girl. I I guess I was that six-year-old just without the understanding of (laughs) um, 
God. But I, uh, I don't know. It's something that always just piqued my interest. I loved science as a kid. And even though I'm more of a humanities person, there was always something, frankly, to kind of throw back. I always found it very romantic in a strange kind of way. And so, and I was always, a lot of people are daunted by the concept of eternity in the uh, universe. I'm, I am daunted, obviously, and very humbled by it, but I think it's very exciting. Sure. And I think it's incredible that ultimately the idea of infinite possibilities that maybe we can't, we can't control, maybe we can, it's not so much daunting as it is exciting to me. And that's always been something that has kind of piqued my interest. So when I was very young, I got into the original series, not too much, but I would like dabble in the episodes, but I never really found the time for it. And then recently I was actually, uh, I had not heard that they were going to kind of revamp it with Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I'm a huge fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson. He spoke at USC and I like ran down there and it was one of the best <laughs> nights of my life. He's so cool. But, um, I was kind of driving, I think it was on Sunset or something, and there was a billboard and it said Cosmos, and I didn't really think much of it, I didn't connect the two, and I was driving with my friend, I'm like, oh, I wonder what that is, it seems kind of cool. I said, oh, did you ever watch the original series? I like, almost got into a car accident, I'm going to watch this, just because it's something, I don't really get the time to watch much TV, I watch my Game of Thrones, I watch my House of Cards, but, it, yep. <laughs> All done but, by it, um, yes. Yes. Uh, it was something that kind of, because I'm a theater major, could also bring in something that I don't really get to spend that much time mm -hmm. focusing on in my day-to-day -day life that I really do love and it's something that I really care about. It's just not really in my face as much as I would necessarily like it to be, so. Whoa. It's in your With face a, now. A warm hug. Welcome to the AfterBuzz family. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in tonight. Yes. So. With that said, we gotta. I mean, we don't. We can't do predictions, Marissa, because what are we gonna Why predict? Not, right? what, what do we I, see next um, week? I predict that in the next episode will be awesome. Okay. <laughs> you know, I think we can all agree with that one. Let's quit while we're behind. Um, so, what we like to do here is just mention where we could be followed, and like via Twitter or Instagram and oh, whatnot. Cool, okay. So, Autumn Chickless, where can we find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Autumn Chickless. That's me. Um, nice. That would probably, yeah, that'd probably be the best place to find me. <laughs> All right, and Scott Moore. Uh, you can also find me on the old Twitter at sman80. That's S M A N eight zero. And here on Monday nights for Archer wrap up, and uh, Wednesdays I do an On with Scott podcast. You can follow on my Twitter and link up to it as well. We had a scientist on from JPL last week talking about oceanography. Ooh. It was a great one. We'll have some more scientists on. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And Mr. Dylan Chance, where can I find you? You can find me on Twitter at Dylan Chance, or you can check out Facebook.com slash A Cosmic Perspective. <laughs> you get so serious. <laughs> I love that. Wow, that was intense. It's a serious thing. It's very, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> you can find me at JC Rubio TV on Instagram and Twitter. And if, like I said last week, the cheesy tie-in, if you like your stars, make sure to catch me on the red carpet for Dancing with the Stars tomorrow oh. night. <laughs> so for Autumn, Scott, Dylan, Marissa, I'm JC. We're your After Buzz for Cosmos. See you next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.